evening, good evening, good evening. And thank you for joining us for yet another Bible study here at MONBC. Let us pray. Father, we thank you so very much for your goodness and your grace toward us. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to study your word. We pray, God, in the name of Jesus, as we look at everything that's going on around us in our, our community, in our state, in our nation, in our world, God. We need the word more than ever. And we're so, so very grateful, Lord, that we have this opportunity to study it. We love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. To God be the glory. So Ephesians chapter number six, praise God. Last week, uh, we finished up talking about uh, the shield of faith. And um, I also reminded you or, or letting you know that it is believed and we see that the six pieces of armor that Paul gives to us are divided into two different categories. The first category lists the first three pieces that Paul gives us, which are the three pieces that Paul believes uh, that suggest that we should have at all times. We got to have our belt of truth. We got to have our um, armor of righteousness or chest, uh, chest armor of righteousness. And we got to have sandals with the readiness of the gospel of peace. And then last week, uh, when talking about the shield of faith, we start talking about the first of the three pieces that's listed in the second category, which are the three pieces that you use as needed, or uh, as I said last week, I like to say use as directed. You know, when you get medication bottle and, you know, you're supposed to read what's on the medication bottle so you don't just take whatever you want to take, but you uh, use as directed. This say take two, uh, if this say take uh, 10 milliliters every uh, six hour, four to six hours, make sure you do uh, 10 milliliters four to six hours, and uh, but use as needed. Uh, one of the reasons why we, or uh, uh, two things, one is uh, your faith comes into question or comes into play, if you would, when you are in doubt, okay? Uh, there was, you know, during the pandemic, uh, there was the phrase, uh, faith over fear, Faith over fear, faith over fear. When you are fearful, when you are doubtful, you gotta, your faith got to kick in to believe. And then at least to this next piece of armor that Paul mentions, which is salvation. Salvation, okay? Ephesians chapter number six, verse number 16. We'll just recap uh, the verse that we talked about last week, and then we'll go on to the next verse. Ephesians chapter number six, verse number 16, if you're ready, sir, ready. In every situation, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Take the helmet of salvation. That's what we want to deal with tonight, the helmet of salvation, okay? It's important that we take on the helmet of salvation. Uh, so um, I'm going to start with the spiritual aspect, which is salvation. And then we'll talk about the physical aspect, which is the helmet piece, okay? Because what, what, what I've tried to do as, as being led by the Lord is really try to look at, okay, why did Paul choose that particular piece of armor? Because do note that when you look at the pieces of armor that Paul gives to us here in Ephesians chapter 6, that uh, this is not all inclusive of all the pieces of armor that a Roman soldier had to wear, Okay. Paul saw the Romish soldier because he was in jail. Those that were in Ephesus, they saw the Romish soldier walking the streets and things of that nature because, you know, they kept guard and all those type of things. And so they saw the Romish soldier. 
So at the end of the day, they were aware, okay, yeah, I see that Roman soldier. He got on a breastplate. You know, I ain't never thought about it like that. A righteousness. Oh, bro, that's right good. You know, after reading this letter. Uh, and so my, my point is, Paul does not include all of the pieces that a Roman soldier would have. He just gives six pieces that to Paul signify the importance of the spiritual components that the Christian soldier should have. He said, yeah, they wear some more pieces. Yeah, they wear some more armor. But I don't need to go into all the pieces because that's too, that's too exhausting. So what I'm going to do is, is, is by the leading of God, I'm going to pick out the six that equate, I'm going to take the physical pieces of armor that the Roman soldiers wear, and I'm going to equate it to six characteristics or six uh, spiritual components that every Christian soldier ought to have when you are fighting this spiritual war. Because remember, we don't fight against flesh and blood. That's what he started off talking about. He said, I struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this darkness, against evil, spiritual forces in the heaven. And so Paul said, I want you to put on the whole armor of God, but and there are six pieces of armor of God that are important to fighting this spiritual fight. And so the spiritual uh, definition or the, the, the Greek definition of the word salvation is the hope of salvation as in another Greek word that means deliverance, preservation, and salvation, okay? Used metaphorically uh, described as a help. Used metaphorically described as a help. Salvation is the hope of salvation as in another Greek word that means deliverance, preservation, salvation. So the Greek word salvation is a Greek word that, that is soterion, soterion, S-O-T-E-R-I-O-N. Those of y'all that uh, write notes and things of that nature, I'm sharing that information with you. The Greek word for salvation is S-O-T-E-R-I-O-N, soterion. The other Greek word that I referenced, the hope of salvation as in this other Greek word is without the O-N, S-O-T-E-R-I-A, soteria, which means deliverance, preservation, and salvation. Now, there are three, pieces, there are three scriptures that I want to look at that we have actually, that we actually have already read. But we read them when we were talking about uh, righteousness, okay? So turn with me, if you would, to Isaiah chapter 59. Isaiah chapter 59. If we talk about this helmet of salvation and salvation in general, what it means to the believer, what it means to us, okay? Isaiah chapter number 59. All right, Isaiah chapter 59, and let's look at verses 16 to 17. Oh, that's interesting. Um, Isaiah chapter 59, verse 16 to 17. Again, we read this before and when we were talking about the um, chest armor of righteousness, okay? Now we want to look at it from the standpoint of salvation, the helmet of salvation. Verse number 16, Isaiah chapter 59. He saw that there was no man 
He was amazed that there was no one interceding. So he is, his own arm brought salvation and his own righteousness supported him. He put on righteousness as body armor, chest, and a helmet of salvation on his head. He put on garments of vengeance for clothing and he wrapped himself in zeal as in a cloak and a helmet of salvation on his head. And we're going to talk about that in just a minute, why that's important. Uh, turn with me to 1 Thessalonians chapter number 5. He put on a helmet of salvation, put a helmet of salvation on his head. 1 Thessalonians, back to the New Testament, chapter number 5. And we're going to start at verse number 7. 1 Thessalonians chapter number 5, if you were with us when we talked about this, uh, it's talking about the day of the Lord, okay? And so in verse number 7 of 1 Thessalonians chapter number 5, if you're ready, so ready. For those who sleep, sleep at night. And those who get drunk, get drunk at night. Okay, he did. he's talking about those uh, that are in the light and those that are not in the light. Those that are in Christ and those that are not in Christ. Then he says in verse number eight, but since we belong to the day, because we're in Christ now, let us be self-controlled and put on the armor of faith and love and a helmet of the hope of salvation. In Isaiah, Isaiah just says the uh, he put on uh, his head a helmet of salvation. Remember, Salvation is the hope of salvation as in deliverance, preservation, or salvation. And so here, uh, Paul is telling the church of Thessalonica that put on a helmet of the hope of salvation. It's the same thing, what just includes the word hope, okay? And why that is important. We'll get to that in just a minute. Now, uh, turn with me to Romans chapter number one. Okay? Isaiah said he put on a chest armor of righteousness. He put on uh, put on his head a helmet of salvation. For, uh, Paul told the church of Thessalonica that we that are in the light need to put on the helmet of the hope of salvation. Romans chapter number one. Paul is talking to the church of Rome, Roman soldiers, those that were in Rome, things of that nature. He was talking to the Ro Ro uh, those that were in Rome at the time here in Romans, and he was, look, encouraging, I really want the verses before verse number 16, uh, I really want to come and visit you, but until then, I need you to understand something. So verse number 15 of Romans chapter number one, excuse me. So I am eager to preach the gospel to you also who are in Rome. I'm eager. I'm, man, I'm, ooh, Lord have mercy. I'm anticipating coming to see y'all. I clear I am. Why am I anticipating to come see him? Because, okay, because verse number 16, Romans chapter one, for I am not ashamed of the gospel. Because it is the power of God for salvation. Before I go any further, catch what he said. For I am not ashamed of the gospel. Because it is the power of God for salvation. Why are you not ashamed of the gospel, uh, Paul? Why are you not ashamed of the good news of Jesus Christ? Because it is the good news of Jesus Christ that presents the power of God for those of us to be saved, to be delivered, to be preserved, to be set free from the state in which we are in. So I will never be ashamed of the gospel because I understand that it is the gospel that provides the power of God for salvation to bring us out of where we once were 
into the place we need to be in God. Good Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. That's good to me. I am not ashamed of the gospel because it's the power of God for salvation. Isaiah said to put, he put on Jesus, put on his head, a helmet of salvation. Paul later tells the church of Thessalonica that you need to put on the uh, helmet of the hope of salvation. He tells the church of Ephesus the same thing. Take up the helmet of salvation. He tells the folks in Rome, I'm not ashamed because it is the salvation. It is the power of God that brings about the salvation. Who does it bring it to, Paul? I'm so glad you asked. Verse number 16, to everyone who believes, to everyone who believes, to everyone who believes, I got to put emphasis on that because, no, Paul was dealing with some folks that thought it was, you know, though, especially those Jews that thought that you had to keep every single law. Jesus said, I did not come to abolish the law. I just came to fulfill the law. In fulfilling the law, I'm going to die for your sins so that you may have the chance to eternal life. But you can't do that if all you're going to do is follow the law because it is not the law that is going to save you. It is the law that's going to correct you. What's going to save you is your faith in me as the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and you, re and you gain salvation. Okay, so to everyone who believes, which is the same struggle that Paul is dealing with when he's telling, when he writes the letter of uh, Ephesians, because he's letting them know, look, I know that you're going to get some folks to say, you need to be circumcised, you need to be circumcised, you need to be circumcised. And at the end of the day, no, I need to believe in Jesus Christ. How do I know that to be true? Because the end of the verse number 16 of Romans chapter 1 said, to everyone who believes, first to the Jew and also to the Greek. At the end of the day, it, yes, it's available to the Jews first because they are the called children of, uh, uh, children of God. But every Greek that is in this place that wants to believe in Jesus Christ can receive salvation. Every Greek, every, every non-Jew, every Gentile, every Greek, every Roman that wants to believe in Jesus Christ has access just by believing. That's why he goes on in Romans chapter number 10 and he tells them, uh, Romans 10, and we uh, talked about this before, uh, that it says, close to your mouth, if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Why, Paul? Verse number 10 of Romans chapter 10, what believes with the heart resulted in righteousness and what confesses with the mouth resulted in salvation. My salvation is taken. I receive salvation because I confess that Jesus is Lord. Could Lord have mercy. And so in Romans chapter 1, he starts off saying, look, everybody want to believe in Jesus can receive this opportunity to believe in Jesus and receive salvation, okay? Now, in thinking about those three scriptures, again, we talked about those before when we were talking about righteousness. In dealing with those three scriptures, they deal with salvation as a whole. Now, I want to look at two more scriptures that deal with why Paul would have referred to the helmet referred salvation to a helmet, okay? Stay in Romans and turn to chapter number 12. Romans chapter number 12 started at the very first verse. Now, in chapter number 11, Paul talks about uh, Israel's rejection is not final. And then he gives what is uh, called a hymn of praise in verses 33 through 36 in uh, chapter 11. So in chapter number 12, verse number 1, he says, Therefore, see it as if I told you those things before, therefore, 
excuse me, brothers and sisters, in view of the mercies of God, in view of the fact that your rejection is not final, that you're going to be saved from your sins, I urge you, I urge you to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true worship. Verse number two. How do I do that, Paul? How do I present my body as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, which is my true worship? Do not be conformed to this age, to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may discern what is the good, pleasing, and perfect will of God. How am I going to be transformed? I got to constantly renew my mind. I got to constantly renew my mind. What does that have to do with salvation and a helmet? I'm so glad you asked. One more scripture. Titus. Keep that in mind. Paul said, by the renewing of your mind. We all over the place now, y'all. Titus, which comes right after 2 Timothy. Titus chapter number three. Oh, praise the Lord. Paul told the church of Romans, he said, look, at the end of the day, you got to know that, uh, yeah, you, you, you only going to be transformed if you renew your mind. If, you, if your mind is constantly renewed, then you'll be transformed. If you don't renew your mind, it's, it's all over with. I'm sorry. I don't know what to tell you. Okay? So he tells Titus in chapter number three. Oh, turn two. Read the page. Lord, that's second two. Okay. Titus chapter number three. After second Timothy is where you find this small letter that uh, Paul wrote to Titus. His true son, his son in the ministry. <coughs> Excuse me. Titus chapter number three. If you're ready, say ready. In verse number one, uh, let's read verses one through three and then I'll tell you why I want to start with verse number one. Titus chapter number three, verse number one. Remind them to submit to rulers and authorities, to obey, to be ready for every good work, to slander no one, to avoid fighting, and to be kind. Always showing gentleness to all people. For we too were once foolish, disobedient, deceived, enslaved by various passions and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful, detesting one another. Before I read verse number four, the reason why we, I started to give us some context of what he was telling Titus here, he, in, in my Bible, is titled, uh, the, head, the subheading is Christian Living Among Outsiders. Verses 1 through 3, he said to Titus to tell them that are now saved, you're going to be a Christian. This is how you got to live amongst those that are not Christian, those that are outside of the Christian fold. They got to live holy. They got to live holy. Got to be holy. Got to be right. You got to live holy because at one time we were foolish. We were deceitful. Uh, Lord, these pages just don't want to do right. We were disobedient. We were deceived. We were enslaved by various passions and pleasures. We lived in malice and envy, hateful, detested one another. Yes, we once did do those type of things. We understand how the outsiders think. Verse number four. But with the kindness of God, our Savior, and his love for mankind appeared. He saved us. Woo. He saved us. Woo. Lord have it. He saved us. Anybody ever been saved from themselves? Anybody, anybody remember when you were saved from the mess that you were in? Saved 
from the road of destruction that you were on. He saved us. Good gracious of life. Thank you, Jesus. Not by works of righteousness that we had done, because if that were the case, none of us would be saved. But according to his mercy, okay? Remember Paul said the same thing in uh, Romans chapter number 12 when he said, I urge you, see that if you see these verses of God, the same thing here, okay? Not by any righteousness that we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. How did he save us, Paul? The end of the verse number five. Through the washing of regeneration and renewal by the Holy Spirit. Okay? Verse number six. He poured out his spirit on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that, having been justified by his grace, we may become heirs with the hope of eternal life. Okay? He saved us. Our salvation is wrapped up in Jesus Christ. But what does that have to do with the renewing of your mind? Here's the, the physical definition of helmet, okay? Why they had a helmet in the first place. Roman soldiers use helmets, of course, to protect the head, okay? Usually, uh, the helmet and the sword, notice in verse number 17 of Ephesians chapter number 6 that we read earlier that he said, take up the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, okay? The helmet and the sword were the one, excuse me, are the last two pieces that a Roman soldier will put on. The helmet itself, <clears throat> excuse me, was hot and uncomfortable, which goes back to why you're only supposed to use the helmet as needed or as directed because a helmet for a Roman soldier was hot and uncomfortable. One, you know, one of the reasons why it was hot and uncomfortable was because although it had various shapes, it was generally made of bronze. I don't know if you've ever picked up bronze before, like a bronze pot, stuff like that. That is heavy. It is heavy. And so can you imagine wearing a bronze helmet on your head? That's hot and got to be uncomfortable. But here's what made it even more hot and uncomfortable. Because not only was it generally made of bronze, but it fit over an iron skull cap Lined with leather and cloth. Sort of like what football players, if you ever see uh, a professional football game, you see football, uh, uh, see the football game, and the players, some of the players will wear like a, a head mask almost. It kind of reminds you of a ski mask or what have you, but it covers their whole head and covers down to their neck. And some of them, they can pull it up over their mouth. Uh, some of them, they don't have that. It just covers the head and the neck, okay? And then they put their, their football helmet on that's made of plastic, okay? But these Roman soldiers, they had a bronze helmet, typically, and they had an iron skull cap that was over their head, and it was lined with leather and cloth. Lord, it's got to be hot and uncomfortable. But the reason why they had it and they only put it on when needed was because they put it on when they were faced with impending danger. Everything is fine. Okay, I'll need this helmet on right now. But if I've got impending danger coming towards me, I need to put my helmet on because I need to protect my head. And, and some of the helmets have in the back uh, what was called like a, a, a bridge uh, to, to, to help protect the neck. So that if a sword came, not only did you have a, a bridge, but you also had on that iron skull cap up under. So it will help uh, lessen the blow, if you would, from a sword swung by the enemy. But not only did they need to protect their head, they needed to protect their mind, the control center of the body. 
So here it is, y'all. Paul told the church in Rome, by the renewing of your mind, that's how you're going to be transformed. And then he told Titus that he saved us through the regenerate, washing of regeneration and renewal by the Holy Spirit. So the helmet of salvation, yes, we are saved. Yes, we have uh, what you would consider your ticket in. But at the end of the day, my mind is attacked by the enemy and I got to take my helmet to protect my mind to remind me of my salvation. Oh, Lord, amen. to remind me I have been saved. I have been bought with a price. I have been delivered. I have been preserved. I have been set free. I've got to put my helmet to a helmet of salvation to protect my mind. Paul said the helmet is like your salvation. It protects your mind so that you don't think like you want to think. You think according to the way Christ wants you to think. Let this mind be in you. That was also in Christ Jesus. Oh, my Lord, have mercy. The renewing of our mind, my salvation. I, I got to put it I got to put my helmet on sometimes to remind myself, no, nah, I can't go that way. Oh, let me get back in order. Oh, I can't be thinking of thoughts. Oh, let me get back in order. I got to always renew my mind every single day. For some, it's every single hour, what have you. But you got to put on that helmet of salvation to protect your head and your mind, the control center of your body. Because as a man, Proverbs tells us, as a man thinking, so is he. At the end of the day, if you begin to think that stuff, you're going to start believing that stuff. If you catch what I just did, if you think that stuff, you're going to start believing that stuff. Stuff starts in your mind and then it travels down to your heart where your passions are, your passions and your desire. Lord, I pray that bless somebody. God, if it did bless you, it so sure bless me. Good gracious of life. I pray you'll join us next week. But next week is the week of Thanksgiving. So I look forward to share with you on Tuesday, November the 21st, instead of uh, next Wednesday. Okay? Uh, we uh, customarily for the last three years, we've been reserving that Wednesday before Thanksgiving for family and what have you. And so uh, we're going to uh, we'll have Bible study on Tuesday evening instead of Wednesday, Tuesday, November 21st. We look forward to share with you in Bible study as we go into that next piece of armor. This coming Sunday morning, we invite you to join us. Online or in person, go purple on this coming Sunday as we bring awareness to uh, World Prematurity uh, Day and Month, uh, pancreatic cancer, and epilepsy. And so we're going to go purple on this coming Sunday, and we invite you to join us again online or in person. Amen. Father, we thank you so very much for your word. Thank you, Lord, for reminding us of the importance of protecting our mind, protecting our head, protecting the control center of our body so that we can be found worthy in you. We thank you so very much, God, for what you've done, what you're doing, and what you continue to do in our lives. Bless us, God, as we continue all throughout the rest of this week as we join back together and, and share uh, in the word on Tuesday, I pray that, Lord, you will bring us back together in one piece, Lord, uh, excited about studying your word. We thank you, Lord, and we praise you. We love you and we adore you. In Jesus' name we pray and count every single thing done. Amen. I love you. And I lift my voice to worship you, O oh, my soul. Rejoice, take joy, my King, in what you Let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your 